Hi everyone, I'm here today to talk about my 2021 goals. I know I made goals for 2020 and they're dead to me. I can say with a reasonable amount of certainty that I did not achieve any of them because I spent a lot of this year being sad and things being kind of up in the air and uncertain and I don't think that there's any reason for me to look at those goals because being pretty, pretty confident in the fact that I did not achieve them why should I do that to myself? I don't want to disappoint myself. I don't want to think about what could have been if the world was different. So like I said, my 2020 goals are dead to me. I don't really care what they were. We're just going to forge on ahead because I don't think that like it'd be productive to reflect too terrible much given how unconventional to say the least this year was. So I do however have some 2021 goals obviously since I'm making a video and it mostly comes from the fact that I am pretty bored and I would love to make some some projects for myself that are relatively easy to achieve um, but I think hopefully will be interesting for me, help me focus my reading a bit and it'll just be a thing to do while I have a lot of free time which I anticipate still having for quite a while. And, and this is a thing that I might reflect back on in a quarter and then say, I don't care about any of those goals anymore. Or maybe I'll get a job and, and things will change. So if that's the case, then I will adjust. But I think that I want to try and make some yearly goals right now and then reflect on them periodically throughout the year rather than just getting to the end of, of 2021, not remembering what I said and probably having failed, which is usually how my goals go. I'm abandoning trying to do any kind of reading challenge. In the past, I participated in the Reading Women Challenge, the Book Write Read Harder Challenge, the Pop Sugar Challenge, and I've realized that I don't really get on with these types of challenges. You know, I think they're great tools for helping people read more diversely and really think consciously about what they're picking up. And for that, I think it's great. But I think that they get a little bit too specific for me and what I'm looking to do. So I just... I'm not going to do any of those. I think that they're fun in the past, but I've never succeeded in one. So I'm just just going to not even go there. I want a bunch of things that I can do well at. Um, I think the other thing with those challenges is I often don't own books that fit into those challenges. And yes, I can get them from the library, but then I have to do a lot of research to find books that fit those categories if they're outside of my, my normal reading comfort zone. And I already have so many books on my, my TBR. I don't want that to continue to explode. I really would like to read some of the books I've had on my TBR for six, seven, eight years because I put them on there for a reason. And there are things that are on my Goodreads TBR shelf that have been there for nearing a decade now. So it'd be great if I actually read those things. And I, I want to read those things. And I think that I read fairly diversely. My goals are definitely, I think, going to help me focus on more books in translation and a lot of backlist titles by authors of color that I haven't gotten to. And I have a huge list of books that are available in my library systems I'm a part of. So I will be narrowing down that TBR that I've been accruing for years and years and years. It's like, you know, a mental list. I don't own that many of those books, but I found a lot of them that I can get from the library that I'm, I'm really, and I'm really excited about them. So I just don't want to have to try and kind of wedge them in to arbitrary challenges that uh, I choose to take on. I am still going to try to focus on reading widely. So anyway, onto my actual goals on top of that, which is focusing, I really want to focus on backlist and, and things that I've had on my TBR for a long time. I keep putting them off, but this year I very much embrace the like, why wait? If you really are excited about this thing, then why put it off? Like just, just read the book already. So um, that's kind of my philosophy going into the year reading tons of backlist, hopefully some front list as well, but I really want to focus on cutting that backlist, uh, my, my backlist TBR down. Knowing me, it'll probably just end up expanding more when I discover new authors and stuff, but I want that to be my focus, is, is that list I've made on my Libby app. Many books that I'm interested in, I think there are over 200, so there's no way I'm going to read them all, but it's a start. On to my actual goals. I definitely want to get a job in a library. Obviously, that's my career goal. It's kind of separate from booktube. I have been looking for a job for now a year. Uh, I had my first job interview in February of 2020 and uh, you know I've been working at it ever since then and it's been really hard and challenging for my confidence and my, my self-esteem and my how I, how I view me as like a valuable entity. Uh, not having work to help me define that part of my life has been really challenging. So I really want to get a job in a library. I have written down here, get a job as a librarian, but even if I'm working as a library assistant or associate for a while, 
you know, just to be doing something. That's a huge goal of mine. The biggest one for sure. And it's kind of out of my control beyond applying and interviewing well. So that's the first goal. Second goal is I really would like to write written reviews of every book I read. This was a goal that I, I think I had in the back of my head for this year and it just kind of fell off. I find Goodreads reviews to be much more helpful if I do more than just put a star rating. I do love looking at other people's star ratings, but I get a much better sense of what that means when I read what they've written, if they've written anything, because we all define those stars a little bit differently. And your three star might mean that you didn't really care for it that much, whereas for me, I think a three star book was good. I didn't exceed my expectations, but I wasn't disappointed by it. You know, it was a good book. So I appreciate when other people write things, but I also find it helpful for myself. If I'm looking back at a book that I read five plus years ago, I might not remember why I rated a certain thing. I've certainly changed a lot as a person since then, so that would be so much more meaningful if I knew what I was thinking about in that moment, and it, I think it would help me remember it better and help me to start synthesizing my thoughts for how I'm going to talk about them in a video. So I want to do that for everyone who follows me on Goodreads, but also for myself, because I think that that is more useful than just a star rating. I still like star ratings, but I would like to write at least a paragraph kind of explaining my thoughts and feelings, and I think that's very achievable. I, I definitely want to try and keep doing that. Another social media related goal is that I really would also like to graduate exclusively to Storygraph. So this is kind of fortifying the idea that the written reviews will be largely for me because Storygraph is not a social platform. If you're not aware of Storygraph, it's this new book tracking website that is not trying to be Goodreads at all. It's definitely more focused on the reading tracking and statistics side of Goodreads, and it also has a recommendation engine that I'm really excited to test out. Those are its main goals, like discovering new titles and tracking your reading. There is a social component, but I think it's not very user-friendly. It kind of just puts everyone that you follow on a feed, which is I guess kind of like Goodreads, but it's not the main page, it's a separate page you have to intentionally click on, and I don't find that that useful, so I don't want to use Storygraph for a social component. And I know a lot of people follow me on Goodreads, and I like looking at people on Goodreads too, but Goodreads frustrates me for a lot of reasons. The search algorithm is inexcusably bad, I don't think it's designed very well. Storygraph has quarter stars, not even just half stars, but you can do 3.25, 3.75, which I think is fantastic. And you know, Goodreads doesn't even have half stars yet. I just think the UX for Goodreads should be better given the theoretical Amazon resources that are behind it and maybe they don't value it as a product but then I think that they should just retire it because it just the ads I think are really obtrusive I don't find it to be that user-friendly and I do like some of the social components of it but I think I could live without them so right now I feel like by the end of 2021 I want to have fully graduated from Goodreads to exclusively using Storygraph. I'm updating both right now, but I kind of sometimes forget to update Storygraph because I'm so used to updating on Goodreads. The main issue with this is that when I imported my Goodreads, not everything imported correctly, and I think it's a Goodreads issue, not a Storygraph issue, just based on the, the, the way that it exported from Goodreads. There are some books that are missing, which is confusing and there are some books that don't, they don't have the correct read date. I want it to be a useful and accurate record for me keeping track of my reading. So that means that I would like to go through Storygraph and fix everything that is wrong, which I know is going to take a really long time because I have eight years of, of reading tracking and you know over 800 books that I've read on there. And so it's gonna be a mess to fix. I'm not really looking forward to that, but once it's done, I think it will be settled into Storygraph and fully committed to it as a platform. And I'm gonna, I'm paying for the subscription service for it because I, I want it to be ad-free. I like the fact that it's ad-free and that it's gonna be a subscription-based service. I know not everyone can afford that, but it still does have a lot of the tools and functionality if you choose the free version. I just want to support them because I really like the project, so that's why I have chosen to invest in it. The short version is, you know, the further I can distance myself from Amazon, the better. I am not perfect. I, you know, I have a Prime subscription because I like watching things on Prime mostly. I try not to buy things on Amazon. Sometimes a Kindle deal gets me, but not, giving Goodreads the gratification of me using it uh, will be a nice removal. I know that it really will not affect them and they don't care about me and me using it, but 
I'll feel good about the choice, I guess. My last social media related goal is a YouTube goal, and it's kind of uh, weird to say. I never really do address numbers or subscribers or anything like that because it just doesn't feel right for me and the way that I view this platform, but I also want to be open about something, which is that I've always really wanted to hit 10,000 subscribers on this channel. I've been making videos for almost eight years now, and I've seen many people that started around my time or started way after me, like completely rocket past me in terms of numbers, and that's fine. I realize that I have been kind of spotty with uploading during my tenure here on YouTube. You know, there I'll go weeks or months without posting because I'm really busy or stressed or depressed and that's just how it is for me, and I know that that's not great for the algorithm, and it has punished me for that, definitely. But I just, it's a thing that I really want to have happen, and I don't think it's gonna happen in 2021 because my channel really hasn't grown at all in about two years. So, you know, increasing my, my subscriber count from eight, around 8,000 to 10,000 in a year, for me, seems really ridiculous and probably won't happen, but I think it's, I'm, you know, I'm a big proponent of voicing the things that you want and not just like being disappointed that things aren't happening, um, even though you never voiced that you wanted them to happen, if that makes sense. So I'm putting it out there. I'm going to say I would really like to hit 10,000 subscribers, but I, you know, if I saw any channel growth at all, I, I would be really happy with that. I, I wish I didn't care about those sorts of things. I love the friends I've met on here. I love talking about books with people and sharing my enthusiasm, but I do want to feel like I'm kind of reaching a little bit further out there. and. YouTube makes it virtually impossible to not at least look at the numbers. So I'm putting it out to you, my friends, but I know it's a big favor to ask, so I feel definitely really uncomfortable asking for that, but I do wish to see my channel grow at least a little bit, if not that huge kind of um, milestone of 10,000. It's one that I've, I've had my eye on for a long time and it would just be so gratifying to hit, even though that is not the point of this. But I do want people to watch my videos. If I just wanted to make these for my own personal gratification, I wouldn't post them or I'd, you know, have a diary. But I, I like the sharing component. I like the dialogue. I like the conversations we have. I love watching videos and supporting people. So um, yeah, I just thought I would put that out into the universe as a thing that would be really cool. Now onto the actual reading goals, which is probably why you're here. Sorry, I put this at the end. I should have put it at the beginning, but I didn't. So um, I'm setting my Goodreads goal for 52 books. I'm almost double that at this point right now, but with all of the uncertainty that this year has brought, I don't want to be pressured by my hobby. So I'm setting it at 52. You know, in a few months, maybe I'll feel a little bit more adventurous with my goal setting, and I can always up that, that Goodreads or story graph you know, reading goal. Really easy to update, but I don't want to start myself off with something that I might not be able to meet just given how uncertain life has been and will likely continue to be. So, 52 books. Very doable for me. This year I had a lot of fun reading the Devabod trilogy by S.A. Chakraborty, so I would love to pick a new series that is completed that I can read start to finish. I have not chosen that series yet, but I think that would be really fun. I had such a fun time kind of plowing through an entire series in just a couple of months. It made me feel really immersed in the world, it made me really get attached to the characters and invested. I, you know, I'll probably be picking something that's sci-fi or fantasy for this, for a little bit of escapism, but that's kind of how I'm feeling about that. I just want to, at some point in the year, find a series that I want to read all the way through and then do that. I think that's a pretty achievable goal. One that's less achievable is one that I wrote down that says to read a short story every day. I don't think that this is going to happen, but I do think it'd be kind of fun to try and read a short story every day and see how long I can keep up a streak of doing that. And I have quite a few short story collections that I either own or are in storage that hopefully I'll be reunited with in the coming year. I really hope so. Um, or on, you know, that I have flagged on my, my Libby app. So I think I want to get through more short story collection. I've only been getting through like one or two a year at this rate. And there are so many out there that I'm interested in. So I really want to try reading a short story a day. I don't think it's actually going to happen, but I, wa I want to try and at least do it through January and maybe having that streak will make me want to keep it going. And then the last things are like even more specific about things I want to read because I'm going to, first of all, I, I really want to participate in the Invisible Cities project, which a bunch of booktubers are doing where they're choosing three countries each month. They're encouraging people to not only read books from those countries, but also maybe cook food, um, recipes from those countries, listen to music from those countries, watch films from those countries to kind of get 
get really immersed in the culture in like a well-rounded way. At the very least, I want to try doing the books. Um, and I've picked out my January reads already. I'm really excited about them. The countries are Argentina, Morocco, and Japan, I think. And I always say that I want to read more translated fiction, and then I continue to not do it. So I think doing this project and having specific countries to focus on would help me read more translated fiction. Hopefully a lot by Women in Translation so I can promote those when August rolls around. At least for the first couple of months of the year I want to try and participate in Invisible Cities. And then I also have set up some like arbitrary re reading challenges for myself. I have decided that I kind of want to theme my months and the themes are going to be broad enough that I'll have a really wide pool of books to choose from but narrow enough that I, I have to have some kind of intentionality when I'm picking my books. I've been such a mood reader. I think that has hindered me from achieving those amorphous goals I throw out there like wanting to read more uh, translated fiction because I don't own that much of it so if I'm just perusing my shelves and picking something that jumps out at me, you know, it's not going to be a translated book because I just don't own that. I don't think I have any on my current shelf. So I think I want to try doing more structured TBRs uh, and have them kind of centered on a theme. Not everything that I read in the month has to be centered on the theme. I'm thinking maybe three to five books that I read of the month I want to have, you know, I want to be related to that theme. If I want to go beyond that, more power to me. So the themes that I've come up with so far, I'm thinking in January, at the very beginning of the year, I want to read uh, three booktubers favorite book of 2020. I already have one picked out because Matthew Sharapa keeps talking about how Parakeet is his favorite novel. I'm just assuming that's not going to change in December. So I'm going to read Parakeet. Most people haven't posted their favorite books of the year videos yet because it's, you know, December's not over yet. So I still have to wait a little bit, I think, before I I finalized those last two, but I would really like to read at least three favorite books from other booktubers to hopefully start my year off on a really good foot because if other people that I really like like these books, hopefully I'll like them too and I'll have a really good start to my reading year. Other themes that I thought of, I also would really like to do a uh, test of the story graph algorithm. I referred to this earlier, but they have a page where you can look at books that they think you'll really like and it's based off of I assume your past reads, but you can also fill out a profile where you say what you really like in a book, what you're prioritizing, if it's world building, if it's character, if it's really good writing, what you don't like in books, do you, um, what genres you don't like to read. It's pretty, it's a, it's a fun survey to do and you can update it whenever you want if your reading mood has changed. But then the app, yeah, it generates a list just for you about books it thinks you'll like. And I have Basically, since I started using Storygraph, thought it would be really fun to do a little test of the algorithm to pick some of its top books and see if they actually, uh, you know, nailed it. I think it'd just be a fun test of the algorithm and to hopefully highlight Storygraph and introduce more people to it. I think that'd be really cool. So that's, that's an idea I had. Um, I'd love to read some former booktube darlings I didn't get around to. You know, things like The Girls by Emma Klein or that book by that like junior doctor in in the UK, I can't remember. Things like that. Books that I've heard uh, tons and tons about. They maybe aren't as hyped anymore. They might have been hyped, you know, three or four years ago, but I've always been interested and just never got to them. I think that's a fun idea that I'm excited about. Another theme I thought of is, is authors I've been really excited to try but haven't gotten to. Another idea is to revisit an author that I really love but only have read a couple books by. I am a person who is much more likely to pick up a debut or try out a new author than than to return to authors I've loved even if I loved their work. For some reason I'm not as compelled to read through their whole bibliography and I think that I should fix that so I want to pick some authors I've loved but haven't really dug very deep into their, their backlist. I think that would be fun. And the last idea I have right now is to read books that I associate with a specific booktuber in that their recommendation or their review was so great that it really made me want to read it, but I think about them and their recommendation and their review whenever I think about that book. It, hopefully um, through this project I can highlight other booktubers I really like and yeah, read a lot of great backlist. That is my major intention with this. And then my last goal is because I'm going to be making structured TBRs, I will be making TBR videos, which means if you happen to watch a TBR video and there's a book that you have or you really want to read and you want to read it with me for some reason, um, I would love to do more buddy reads. I haven't really done many, if any, successful buddy reads. Either they give up on it or I give up on it or we're not reading it at the same time. They like blow past me or I, you know, read too quickly for them and we don't really end up talking about it that much. That's pretty much 
always my experience with buddy reads but I know people love them and I assume that they have to work sometimes so I would love to do more of them try it out and hopefully by making TBR videos and kind of announcing what I'm gonna read that sounds so formal but like you know putting it out there what I'm gonna read seeing if anyone wants to read along I think that that would be really fun and I want to make more booktube friends and uh, get to know the booktube friends I have even better I think that that would be great so yeah those are my general goals like I said hopefully they're they're kind of specific but also I think entirely achievable uh, and I had a lot of fun thinking up them. I'm, I, even within the past few days I've thought of new things that I want to do and added them to this list as I've gone um, but it's gonna eventually get out of control so I'm stopping myself here. These are the goals I'm setting for myself now and hopefully I remember to check back in after a quarter and see if I need to adjust, add things, take things away. I'd love to hear what you think of my goals, uh, if, what your goals are for the year. If there are any of these that you want to join in with me I think that'd be fun. And yeah, I think I just want to try and put, start 2021 off on a good foot. It's gotta be better than this year, right? So looking forward to that. With that all being said, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.